and I swear on my life, he hit that note even better live than he did in the studio on the actual track. Player, this pimp don't lie. How many rap stars you know that went to Berkeley High? I'm always with a cup of bourbon. I'm in here choosing, you up here searching. Yo, 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 welcome to the show, everybody. It's me, Ben, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm talking all about my experience at the Super M concert in Atlanta. It was super dope. If you missed my vlog of the concert, be sure to go check that out. That'll be linked at the beginning or the end of this video, probably the end. Um, so maybe in the description as well. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Go check that out as well. Uh, we're doing two different videos because I didn't want the vlog to be like half an hour long because I want to sit here and I want to talk about the things that I saw. Um, and you know, that's what we're here to do. So yeah, I'm literally just going to run down the set list and just talk to you guys about, you know, how I felt about different things. This video is going to be super informal. I don't have it scripted. We're just going to talk. I don't normally do this but this was a special occasion for obvious reasons, so I figured a special video would be worth it. And I figured some of y'all would probably rather have me sit down and just talk about everything that happened anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. Anyway, first things first, the concert in general was amazing, just off the bat. It was one of the best nights of my entire life. Not any exaggeration, it was amazing. Every single song had me, you know, going ballistic. I lost my voice by the end of I Can't Stand the Rain, which was the opening, so that's just the way that it goes. Um, but yeah, overall, it was really well run. I know there was some, I think in Fort Worth, there were some, 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 some complications with getting people in on time. That definitely didn't happen in Atlanta. I think they actually started letting us in early. Um, so it was super, super easy. Everything was great. Um, the venue was, that Infinite Energy Arena, whatever it's called, is one of the nicest places I've been as far as larger scale events go. And they really keep that place like spotless. It's so clean in there. Um, but yeah, so overall concert experience, like 10 out of 10. I don't think you can get higher than that. Um, I'll just go down the set list here. Can't Stand the Rain was phenomenal live. Um, I honestly didn't love it that much when I listened to it on the album for the first time. And now that I've seen it live, I love it. So that's just, you know, that that's, that's the power of the boys, to be honest. We moved into Tay Men's. Um, we obviously had Danger and Goodbye. He's performed both of these so far. I didn't realize he was going to mix in a little bit of Sherlock with Danger when he did, but I got super hyped. Obviously, I haven't reacted to Danger or Goodbye yet. I've been planning to for a while, but just haven't gotten around to it yet, um, and I still will. <clears throat> but I uh, did notice a few bits and pieces of Sherlock in Danger, and I got super hyped. Um, but yeah, then obviously we moved on to GTA, which Taeyong did. Uh, and this is an unreleased song, but I need it to release because one, it's Taeyong, and Taeyong is without a doubt my bias of the group. He's probably my alt male bias in K-pop, to be honest, at this point. Um, and that was probably one of my top three or four favorite songs that I got to see live that day. It was amazing. Um, I don't really have any specific thoughts other than I need it now, and I feel very blessed to have seen it live. Um, obviously, if you want to go watch my vlog, feel free. Those, the fan cams that I have are not professional, y'all. There's a 95% chance you'll find somebody better that did it better than me. So please go watch other people's videos, but there's probably at least some sort of clip of that in my vlog if you really are interested. Uh, and then after that, obviously, we went on to Supercar. And I'm going to be real with you. I said this when I reviewed the album for the first time. Supercar very well could have been the title track if Jopping just didn't exist. Because Supercar is amazing. And seeing that live, once again, one of my top three or four that we saw that night, it was... Ugh, I don't even I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest. It, it just... It just blew me away. Um, I already loved the song in general, but seeing it live just blew me away. And then obviously we moved into Ten's two solo tracks, Dream in a Dream and New Heroes. I haven't seen New Heroes yet, but Dream in a Dream I reacted to just the other day. Um, thank you to y'all for being on me to react to that before I went and saw it live because it was amazing after I had seen the music video. There's so many like extra little elements that Ten incorporated from the music video into the live. Um, that were just really meaningful and really cool. But yeah, it was interesting because um, I, obviously all, all the guys affected me differently. Uh, I definitely feel even more love for all of them if I, that's even possible. I thought I had already hit that maximum, but apparently not. Um, but it definitely, it definitely cemented like little things about each member that I really, really love. Like Lucas, 
like I don't, like we're talking about ten right now. But for me, like Lucas was. Lucas was hilarious on stage. Like he was the one that looked the most natural when it came to the in-between breaks where they were talking. Um, and whether that's like rehearsed or not, it probably is to be honest, cause it's, you know, it's a major stage, but he was just so natural and funny and just hamming it up. I don't know. So it, anyway, 10 blew me away live. Um, we're gonna talk about Baby Don't Stop here in a little bit. We'll get to that. But in general, 10 solos were so good and I, I tweeted I tweeted this um, last night, but when it comes to any of any of these guys, you almost need to give all of them a solo concert so that they can truly show off what they've got. Because we got to the end of 10 second song and I was like, that's that's the last solo song from him. I want him to come back and do more. You know what I mean? Um, so it's tough. You know, you can only you can only prep so many songs for a, a concert of this scale. And then uh, after that, Lucas had his one solo song and I'm realizing that on the site, it doesn't even have the name of it. I don't know what it was. It was a little off brand to be honest, but I really liked it. The song itself was super dope. His performance was even better. Um, I think I'll end up liking the song if and when it drops. I think, you know, I'll probably listen to it, add it to a playlist, listen to it every so often, but that, I'm gonna have to go find like a nice fan cam of that from, from last night because just witnessing him and his element live was just super dope. After that, of course, we had Bay's two solo tracks, went to Betcha first and then You and Village, which was interesting because he kind of cut Betcha off kind of halfway through it and switched into You and Village. And I kind of wish he hadn't done that because I love Betcha, but that's fine. Also, I'm gonna argue that I would have loved to see Psycho live even over Betcha. Betcha ended up becoming probably my favorite part of the show that night, to be honest, just because I think he killed it. Um, but I just love Psycho and I don't think Psycho gets enough attention. Like the entire album that he released was dope, but I kind of wish Psycho had just gotten a little bit more love. Anyway, You and Village was obviously amazing. I filmed plenty of that as well, obviously. Feel free to check out the vlog as well. Um, but yeah, then of course we had Dangerous Woman. We don't even need to talk about that. Absolutely ripped me to shreds, barely survived. Um, you know, looking forward to that formal release. And then we had Too Fast, Too Fast is obviously from the album, super dope as well. I don't really have anything uh, too extra to say about it besides that obviously I was on my feet, I was cheering my heart out. And then we get to Baby Don't Stop. And here's the thing, y'all. Here's, here's the thing, y'all. With Baby Don't Stop, I had, I had recorded a good bit of the concert at this point. And I was getting to a point where I was like, you know what, this is the part of the show where Ben, you know, you, you sit back, appreciate the rest of the concert, film a little bit here and there obviously because you don't want to miss like massive parts of all the songs but you know I allowed my phone to drop a little bit to keep my eyes on the performers and I did that more with Baby Don't Stop than I think any other song in the entire you know lineup and I'm very glad that that was the song I chose because Ten and Young absolutely destroyed me I mean I, I tweeted this as well. Taeyong, without a doubt, cemented himself as my, without a doubt, number one male alt K-pop bias. Not even close. It's not even close. Like this man, I could not take my eyes off of him the entire night. If he was on stage, my eyes were on him. Like, and that's crazy to say. He's sharing the stage with these other guys that are just as talented, just as hardworking, but something about him Something about Taeyong does something to me and I, I can't, I don't know, I just can't keep my eyes off him. You know what I mean? Um, but Baby Don't Stop absolutely floored me. I had to sit down after the performance was over, man. Then we got over to Talk About and Talk About. Mark absolutely smashed this. This needs to release as soon as possible because this, in my opinion, as far as the unreleased songs go, this was the best one. Let me look back, Dangerous Woman was great. Lucas's was great, um, Taeyong, even Taeyong's. Taeyong's solo was amazing, okay? I cannot wait for GTA to come out, but Mark's solo, the amount of fans that Mark had in Atlanta were unbelievable. I think the, the three probably loudest cheers were Mark, Bay, and Taemin. 
Those are probably the three loudest. Kai as well. Kai had a lot of fans there. I don't know. It was weird. I felt very much, I felt very much like on the lower, I don't know, sort of like of a, of a lower percentage. You know what I mean? Like there, you know, there are plenty of, you know, Taeyong biases out there because I met a couple, talked to a few, um, but I don't know if, I don't know if Kai biases are just louder than us. I don't know. It was, it was crazy. Anyway, the whole, it was, it was a whole screaming fest the entire night, but Martin nailed his solo. After that, Kai nailed his solo. Y'all got to release these, bro. Like I understand the hype of performing a new song live, but half of the concert was unreleased music. You know what I mean? Like we can get hyped about it, but if we can sing more of the words, it's fun. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I understand. I'm not really critiquing. I'm just saying, why Why couldn't we release the music before tour? You know what I mean? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, then we had a little intermission, um, which was cool. I didn't really pay attention that much. I was still trying to catch my breath after Baby Don't Stop, despite the fact that we were still two songs after it. Um, and then we went with No Manners with you and Dropping uh, for the encore. So No Manners was great. Um, no Manners is also a song that I didn't really care for as much. I liked it fine when I listened to the album for the first time, but it just, it wasn't, you know, Supercar. You know what I mean? Supercar was like, <laughs> for me. Um, but I love that live with you, which is unreleased. For those of y'all that haven't heard snippets of that yet, you might want to avoid spoilers for it because it's really good. Like really, really good. Um, and it might just be worth waiting until they drop a music video or they drop an official version because it's super dope, seriously. Um, that was also probably one of my favorite parts of the stage that night. But then, and this is the last thing we'll talk about, at least as far as the concert songs go. Jopping was interesting. It felt like, it felt like, <laughs> it felt like they cranked the volume up like one more notch for chopping because I swear that bass was hitting my chest like like a bullet train. It was ridiculous. And when I knew it was coming because Bay stepped back, Bay Ken stepped back like he does in the music video, throws his head back and lets that high note sing. And I swear on my life, he hit that note even better live than he did in the studio on the actual track. I wish I could I wish I could put into words or the audio in my vlog would be able to translate but it won't. You had to be there. And if you were there in Atlanta, you understand what I'm talking about because that the applause that that got was unbelievable. And you know, obviously it's a very important part of the song. It's the climax of the song, right? So naturally it's going to get a lot of cheers, but the cheers that I was hearing around me were no way, not this is my favorite part, you know what I mean? It was just jaw dropping. That was one of my favorite moments of the entire concert because Bay just, the way that he commands attention on stage. And then he did like a couple, he was body rolling in between like one, uh, two of the tracks just like for fun and the camera picked up on it and zoomed in and I'm sitting here trying to survive. Like, do you want me to die? But yeah, as a whole, the concert was super, super dope. Like I said, uh, I got to meet a few of y'all, which was amazing. I got to meet nine different appreciators. So thank you guys so much for coming up to me and just saying hi. I really appreciate that. Really, like, no BS. That that actually made the entire day for me. Like being able to just sit down and talk with y'all really quickly for a second was super, super dope. And um, you know, it's. When I went to see Blackpink, obviously, and I wasn't really making videos yet, that was so out of the question, it wasn't even funny. You know what I mean? Um, or at least I had been barely making videos at that point. Um, so just being able to talk to you guys and like see the people that literally make this possible for me, for, for YouTube to be my career is amazing. So thank you guys so much for coming up to me. That really, like I said, that seeing Super M epic like unbelievable levels of epic and then meeting the people that helped me get there was like dream come true so overall it was an amazing night i did not sleep at all pulled an all-nighter with andy and connor obviously who went with me um so i'm kind of dying right now but i would rather make these videos while it's still fresh in my head and the memories are still there um, so that I can come back later and potentially watch this myself. You know what I mean? Um, 
But yeah, this was super dope. I don't want to drag this out too much longer than it needs to be. I just wanted to sit down and just sort of run through what I thought about everything. Overall, I think, um, I think Mark probably shredded me the most. I obviously, like I said, I confirmed that Young is pretty much untouchable when it comes to male idols for me. I, like no one comes close. Um, and that was obviously evident that, you know, last night, but Mark shredded me. And I'd say, I'd say that Kai shredded me as well. I was ready, here's the thing, yo. I was ready for Tae Min. I was ready for Ten especially when it comes to like, when it comes to dancing. I was especially ready for them to just, you know, rip me to pieces. But I don't know what it was about Mark and the aura that he had about him during his solo, cause that was towards the end. There's a lot of extra energy in those last few songs. So having Mark sort of continue that from Baby Don't Stop into his solo was amazing. And then Kai immediately following Mark, like there was no break. If I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. There was like no break in between those songs. Typically they'd stop for a second, talk to the crowd, whatever. It was right into that and having to go, it was like, it was like traumatizing to be honest. Cause I was super hyped for Mark. And then as I was catching my breath, Kai comes out shirtless and I'm like, okay, here we go. You know? Um, <clears throat> So honestly, it's it's just massive shout out to all the guys. They smashed it. Um, apparently, Tae Min was under the weather of some sort. I didn't really understand what Mark was saying on stage, but apparently Tae Min was a little bit under the weather and he still performed like the treasure that he is. So I, you know, I if Mark hadn't said anything, we wouldn't have known. I couldn't I couldn't have told you that he was sick. He looked amazing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I, like I said, I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. I just wanted to sit down and talk because I don't normally do this. And this is, this is, this is, you know, the type of occasion that needs to be talked about rather than just, oh, I put this at the end of the video for my vlog. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, like I said, feel free to go check out my vlog if you haven't already. Um, I'll be editing that after I finish recording this, but they'll go up at the same time. So, you know, if you've seen one, you can go watch the other, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and your continued support of me. I appreciate you guys very, 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 very much. Um, yeah, other than that, my friends, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, I love you very much. Keep dropping and peace. Bye.